Hi there eToro, it is Monday and that means it is time to review what happened in the markets last week. Let's take a look. Okay, starting with stats. Uh, by the way, I, I've been using this bullsheet.me tool for a while. There's a new version that's just been released. Um, I have no affiliation with them, but it's quite a good tool for reviewing your portfolio, slicing and dicing your data if you want to take a look. All right, starting with the one year stats, as I do every time. If you had invested with the all of your money into the S&P 500 one year ago, uh, as of Friday, you would have had a return of 37%, which is pretty decent. September was a very tough month last year. Uh, and if you had invested all of your money with me, your return would be a little over 50% right now. Okay, we... the the most obvious thing looking at this chart is that for the past 10 days, so this yellow dotted line represents roughly one week ago. And so over the, the past 10 trading sessions before the bounce, uh, the SP 500 fell four and a half percent, which is a, a decent and, and healthy decline. Um, there are some that are calling for it to go further, but you know, we'll see. All right, so last week we had some interesting data. I'm going to start with my new format, which is I'll talk about the UK first. So we had some interesting data out of the UK. Uh, first of all, the, the there are a number of data misses. So manufacturing PMI came in a lot lower than expected. The Bank of England and many other analysts now expect inflation to shoot higher than originally anticipated, although it, that is expected to be temporary. We, of course, have a number of challenges, <laughs> logistical challenges and uh, government level challenges in the UK at the moment. Um, but despite all of these, we saw the, the a number of UK stocks flying higher last week. Um, and I think that in part, this is because UK numbers have been depressed. Stock prices have been depressed for a long time. Um, but also, I think that we are just moving from this immense period of growth that we saw after the pandemics kicked off and are returning quite quickly, <laughs> as quickly as we recovered to some sense of normality. Uh, there are a number of bumps along the way, and that's to be expected with uh, such sharp, quick movements. But I think that we will probably settle somewhere that is a bit more normal in terms of growth, inflation, etc., over the next six to 12 months. Uh, the economic challenges have resulted in media outlets shouting about stagflation, as you know. I'm not a big fan of the media, and also they tend to try and find something for us to be worried about all the time. So economic growth is slowing, or it's slowed for a month at least, and inflation is rising. Prices are going to increase. There's no getting around that. And so now you can see everyone's talking about stagflation. I am not sure that will materialize, but we'll see what happens. I think we'll just return to normal. It will just be a bumpy path to normality. Um, so the hot topic today, but also over the past week, uh, all the, the two hot topics have been the energy crisis. So, and this is not just in the UK, but it is particularly dire in the UK. And there seems to be a fuel shortage, gasoline shortage, um, although, it's not sure, it's not certain right now if panic buying has created the shortage. Um, but anyway, we it is a result of us effectively having too few people to drive trucks in the UK as a result of Brexit. And so there are all these emergency plans to try and fix that problem. Although the countries in the EU are not so keen to help given how nasty the Brexit divorce proceedings were. Now, despite all of the negative economic data and the challenges we face at the moment, uh, a number of UK stocks rose quite nicely through last week. And I mean, we had some challenges in the, let me make this bigger, in the US and Chinese markets and the returns that we have had in our UK stocks have softened the blow through last week a little bit. And uh, some of these numbers are distorted. Cineworld and Roll, uh, Rolls Royce are up massively again today. Um, but UK stocks have finally started performing a little bit better. Now I'm wondering because we have so much, so many negative headlines and economic data, but the stocks are rising, if this might point to international investors starting to 
become interested in UK stocks because US stocks are, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are uh, a lot more expensive than UK stocks at the moment. There are individual things that have contributed to the, to the, the rise in prices of some of these companies. Sudden World is rising because of the anticipation of the, the new James Bond movie. Rolls-Royce just secured a nice, fat, big contract. Um, but as you can see, UK stocks with the UK flags have been doing quite well through the past week overall. Moving on to the US, so we, I showed you the chart for the S&P 500. The NASDAQ 100 has been following a similar path, so 10 sessions of pullback. Um, the deepest of these being on Monday last week, as I think we all know. When I was creating my video last week, I ignored the big red candle, and now it's time to talk about that big red candle on Monday. Uh, but since then, the markets have bounced, and both the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 have uh, clawed back roughly half of the the loss over those 10 sessions up until the end of the trading day on Friday. Oh, actually, this should be down here. So roughly half of the SP 500, NASDAQ is probably a third of the way. The collapse that we saw on Monday was supposedly due to everyone freaking the hell out about the collapse of Evergrande and how that collapse might spread through the rest of the global financial system and real estate system. Uh, since then, that hasn't really happened, and it seems as though the Chinese government might be helping them through uh, indirect channels, um, but that saga is still unfolding. I think that perhaps some part, maybe a large part of what we saw on Monday was the market anticipating the Fed talking about tapering on Wednesday last week. And the Fed did talk about tapering and gave some pretty strong signals saying that, you know, it might happen soon, could start soon, and it could end around the middle of 2022. Um, you could also see that it doesn't necessarily signal a rate lift off the rate in question being the interest rate across the US. Instead of seeing a taper tantrum when this happened, it, it's the same for the SP 500 uh, as well as the NASDAQ 100, we saw a taper rally. And I think this is because the market had already priced in the chance of this happening, or more than priced in the chance of this happening. And so the news happened and the market rallied off of the lows um, after the 10, 10 day pullback. Now looking at the S&P 500 for, this is the one month um, heat map. Uh, of the S&P 500, I like to look at this view and see what types of patterns are happening across the various uh, the breakdowns of the, the stocks within the S&P 500 because they that can help us understand where investors and traders think we are within the economic cycle. Um, and it's kind of hard looking back over the past month to discern where we are and to what macroeconomic uh, things people are trading at the moment. We can see for definite that industrials have sold off. We can see the basic materials have sold off. We can see that utilities have sold off. We can see that healthcare has sold off. And these are usually the places that people run to when they're looking for a bit of safety, when they're at, um, adopting a risk off attitude. Uh, we can also see that money has run to software a little bit, consumer cyclicals, uh, as well as energy. Now, I think that the, the the trends that we that I'm calling out here are not necessarily because we where we are in terms of the business cycle, but because of um, major events that we've seen recently. For example, there's a bit of a supply squeeze going on with oil, and that's why we're seeing energy stocks have a bit of a run. We're moving towards Q4, which is the best part of the year for uh, retail stocks. And I think that people are buying these up in anticipation of that happening. Um, so I I think that the patterns we've seen are lesser, lesser comment on the macroeconomic trends, but more because of big things that are happening uh, around the world, big events that are happening around the world, driving prices in certain areas. Now, looking at our old mate China, we know that the market was saying that the reason for those big fat red candles in the US markets on Monday was because of the Evergrande crisis. And it seems that those fears have faded, although um, just so you know, debt repayment dates are, are still 
uh, coming up. I think there's one this week and, and there, there will be more. Although it seems as though, if you listen to the rumors, that China might be helping soften the blow of this collapse. Um, but it will go on for a while. It, it, it wasn't over. It didn't happen and end last week, just so you know. The other major news out of China is that they've cracked down on all crypto activities. And if you go onto Twitter and various social media, you'll see that a lot of the bills for Bitcoin and cryptos are saying, how can China reban something that it was already banned? Um, and they, they aren't though. They, this is another step towards banning crypto overall within China. So the market dipped quite strongly on this news, crypto market dipped quite strongly in this news and has had a little bit of a rebound through Friday as well as the weekend or it's held levels over the weekend. My concern here is that we haven't yet had time to properly see the effect in the crypto market of this happening. If just about everything with regards to crypto is illegal in China and there are people that were and companies that were holding crypto in China, um, I think that we might see some big whales moving or dropping positions. Um, but that remains to be seen. I think that the slack will eventually be picked up by other countries because there's a lot of money to be made in crypto. And if there's one less big player in the pool, someone's going to take up that slack. Something that seemed to have fallen off the radar, though, is that uh, there were other crackdowns uh, by the Chinese regulators and government last week. So the notable one being media. Uh, and Alibaba is a company that has been building a bit of a media empire over the past few years. For example, they're in the South China Morning Post, but also lots of bits and pieces of other companies or, in, or the entire companies. Um, and now it looks as though China's going to crack down on media, which I don't know. I kind of expected this because media is is uh, can can set the opinions for a large part of the population, and if the Chinese government wants control, they need to control the media. So this got less attention than the other big items. The other the other items were very large though, and this caused a drop in Alibaba's stock, which has been dropping for a long, 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 long time now, uh, but now is at a level below um, mid-2019 prices. Now, this doesn't mean anything. It could continue to fall, depending on what the Chinese government does and how much more regulation there is to come and how it might impact Alibaba, etc., etc. Um, the stock is looking quite cheap, but now, because of what the company is doing in response to the government's regulation, I do feel that Alibaba is not going to be the company that it once was, and it might never recover, it might never be that company ever again. I still think it will be a behemoth in China and around the world, um, but there's going to be a pretty large impact to its operations uh, in the short term and the medium term. So I'm, uh, the, the company will be reporting earnings at the end of next month, and it'll be interesting to see, to get our hands on the data and see if they make any forward-looking statements, make any forecasts about the future of the business. Um, because I am still quite bullish on Alibaba, and when sentiment does turn and the regulations, regulatory action slows down, I'll be looking to build my position. But for now, um, I do have a position that's very much in the red. I think that this will uh, one day be, be massively back in the green, but I want to build up my position when I feel that that sentiment has turned again. All right, and what about this week? So we're, we have lots of juicy things happening uh, economically throughout this week. So we have the, the leaders of various central banks um, giving talks, including the Bank of England, the Fed chair, um, the ECB presidents. We're also getting GDP data out of the US as well as the UK. We've got manufacturing and PMI data out of the UK, CPI data out of the EU. So lots of economic data. And like I say, every week, this has the power to, to move the market if something unexpected happens. So I do watch these events quite closely. Um, sometimes the immediate response to a miss or beat in terms of economic data is just a bit of noise and the market you know, returns to normal. Um, but it's still, these are bits and pieces of information that we do need to pay attention to. 
We also have the energy crisis that I mentioned within the UK and our government is working to deal with this, uh, but this could spread through the EU and potentially wider because it's not just the, the supply is shared amongst many, many countries. Uh, so it's something to keep an eye on and how, how it will be resolved, if at all, um, will be important to the markets, especially going into winter. Another topic that I'm sure you have heard about is the US debt ceiling. More and more media outlets are picking up the story because we are approaching the deadline, which is roughly in the mid uh, middle of October, um, for the House to pass a measure to keep the government funded. The US debt ceiling is exactly what it sounds like it is. Um, so it's a ceiling on the amount of national debt. It's a ceiling on the amount of debt that the government can use to, to fund its operations. If the government doesn't raise this debt ceiling, the US will start defaulting on its debt. And this would be a very bad thing, not only for the US, but for the rest of the world, because the rest of the world owns quite a lot of US debt. It's very, very unlikely that it, this will happen, by the way. And there are a few ways around it. It's a highly political thing within the US, um, but it does have the potential to move the market, especially if we get pretty close to this date and nothing has happened. In the same way that sentiment and expectations about Evergrande moved the market in a big way last Monday, despite there actually being no major negative fallout at that point in time, uh, this event could have a similar effect. So it's something to keep an eye on. And lastly, Micron, one of my favorite companies to invest in over the past five or 10 years, uh, will be reporting earnings tomorrow. Micron reports earnings way ahead of the other stocks in my portfolio. I have a sizable investment in Micron. I'll be very interested in, in the details that come out for, of that earnings report. Um, the, the price of Micron, I feel, is much cheaper than where it should be. Um, uh, but even if the earnings report signals a short-term blip in terms of earnings, I am bullish on this for through at least 2022. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you have a fantastic Monday and I will speak to you next week. Goodbye.